Please be seated. We want to remember Jesus this morning by participating in communion. As a part of communion, we are to examine our hearts and remember the price that was paid to redeem us. We want to remember Christ taking on the form of a man, how he walked on the earth. He was blameless, how he was obedient to the point of dying on a cross for sins for all those who would believe in him. Our passage this morning is John 4, verses 20 through 24. In a moment, we will read this passage together. If you do not have a Bible, please raise your hand. There are men in the front who would be happy to provide you with a Bible, and if you don't have a Bible, please feel free to take this one home with you. Let's pray together. Father, as a part of our worship of you, we want to recall the grace that you have extended to us. Through your grace, you rescued us from the domain of darkness and delivered us into the kingdom of your beloved Son. We are so grateful to be chosen by you, to be set apart to you, and to know that you are sovereign over all things. May we worship you with all of our heart and with all of our soul and with all of our might. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, we are going to read from John 4, verses 20 through 24. I was drawn to this passage because of the number of times that a form of the word worship is mentioned. In five verses, it is used ten times. In this passage, Jesus is responding to a Samaritan woman with whom he has had conversation about what it means to receive the gift of living water. She perceived him to be a prophet. And in verse 20, she wanted to take Jesus' attention away from her sin by stating what she knew about worship. Let's read together John 4, 20 through 24, starting with the words of the Samaritan woman. She says, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Verse 21, Jesus said to her, Woman, Believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Notice in verse 22, Jesus respond, responded to her diversion with, You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. Then in verse 23, he says, But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people the Father seeks to be his worshipers. Jesus is making it clear that true worship is not about where and when we worship. In verse 23, the word hour is making reference to Jesus' death, his resurrection, and his being seated at the right hand of God. Jesus is saying that an hour, that the hour is now, and that by accepting him as Messiah, it is the only acceptable means of worshiping God. When a person sees his sin and comprehends that there is no way to be forgiven except through knowing Christ, this is the beginning of true worship. Redemption creates true worship. 
One commentator says it this way, being in Christ, true worship is the acknowledgement of God and all his power and glory in everything that we do. The highest form of praise and worship is obedience to him and his word. To, new, to do this, we must know God. We cannot be ignorant of him or his ways. Worship is to glorify and exalt God, to show your loyalty and admiration to our Father. End of quote. As a true worshiper of God, your thoughts will be filled with reverence for him. Your words will be laced with his grace, and your actions will reflect your love for him. Looking back at verse 23, it says that true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth. The essence of true worship in spirit is to engage the whole heart. You might think about, you might think about what it means to worship in spirit by the message of Moses in Deuteronomy 6, verses 5 and 6. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. Unless you have a passion for God, his love, his power, his attributes, and his promises, you are not worshiping in spirit. At the same time, we must worship in truth, and that is to know the God of the Bible. If we want to worship in spirit and truth, we need to know him well. God has chosen to reveal himself through his word, and knowing God's word is a prerequisite to worship and to obedience. We can't take ungodly thoughts captive and replace them with godly thoughts if we don't know his word. The combination of both spirit and truth results in a joy, joyous appreciation of God as revealed in Scripture. The more, we know, the more we know about God, the more we appreciate Him. The more we appreciate, the deeper our worship. And the deeper our worship, the more God is glorified. Jesus ends verse 23 by stating, For such people... the the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is seeking only true worshipers who will worship in spirit and truth. Those whom he seeks will be saved for the purpose of worshiping him. How comforting is it to know that he chose his true worshipers before the beginning of time. Ephesians 4. 1, 4 through 5, as Sam read earlier, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him in love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will. If you are here today and you know that you are not a worshiper of Christ, please take this time to think about Jesus, who he was and the reason that he would take on the form of a man to suffer and die an excruciating death so that sinners could be forgiven. If there's an emptiness in your heart and you can't seem to satisfy it, no matter which way you turn, please consider Jesus. He is the way the truth, and the life. We are so glad that you could join us at this time of worship, but if you're not a believer, communion is not for you, and you should allow the bread and the juice to pass you by. For those who have placed their trust in Christ, how is your time with Jesus? Are you reading? Are you learning? Are you growing? Are you growing in the grace and the knowledge of your Savior? Please use this time to meditate on the truth about God 
and the suffering of Christ on your behalf. Confess your sins, and if need be, please go to the one that you have sinned against and seek their forgiveness. Worship God in spirit and truth. Men, please come and serve us. When you are ready, you may take communion on your own.